Okay, so I've fired up Dorico here and I have up my chart Power Stroke. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how I get notes into Dorico if I want to do any kind of arranging or just simple note entry if I'm um, doing a composition. The first thing we need to do is we need to use the typing keyboard and the MIDI keyboard in tandem. So the first thing to note is when we go to enter notes into our document, we need to go into the um, input tool, just like if we're using the mouse or the typing keyboard. So I'm gonna go to a measure and I'm gonna hit the return key, which activates the right mode so I can get in some notes. Now the way Dorico works with MIDI input is it starts with a note value first and then it adds in the pitches second. So what does that mean? Well, that means I need to choose all of my options first. I need to choose the duration of the note. I wanna choose if I'm gonna put a staccato, a marcato, an accent. Do I wanna start a series of slurs? Do I wanna do triplets? I choose all of these things first, then I enter the note. So let's say I wanted to do a number of eighth notes into this first measure. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down to my keyboard, and I'm gonna hit the five key. And I can do it over here on the numpad, or I can do it up here on the top, doesn't matter. And the five activates the eighth note. Now you can see up here in the menu, when I choose different note values, it will actually select them over there as if I clicked on them. And you can go over there and just select it with your mouse if you want, but I find to keep myself going faster in note input, if I have one hand on the typing keyboard and one hand on the musical keyboard, I can kind of work in tandem, which really speeds me up. So now that I have the eighth note selected, now I can start thinking about pitches. Now again, um, the pitches are literal on the keyboard here. So if I hit this middle C, you'll see it inputs a middle C, and so on and so forth. And so if I wanted to do a quick um, uh, take on Mary Had a Little Lamb, I could literally just type it in. And there you go. And so I know that seems really, really basic and really normal, but it is such a time saver because you'll notice that when I hit an E natural, it automatically put in my accidental because I'm actually in two flats. And so the nice thing about entering the notes on the MIDI keyboard is I don't have to worry about those accidentals. Dorico is taking care of it for me on the fly. So it literally puts in the note I enter and I don't have to put in an E and then raise it by a half step or anything like that. Another cool feature about using the MIDI keyboard is you can input notes into multiple staves at once. So if you hold down the shift key on your keyboard and hit down, you can see that it extends the carrot down to the next stave below, which means now if I was to hit two notes, it'll put the top note in the top stave and the bottom note in the bottom stave. And Dorico doesn't care if one's a berry sax and one's a piccolo. It also has the ability, if you're doing a unison line, you can actually enter one set of notes and it'll actually input all of those notes into all the staves selected. So if I go down here to this trumpet part and I wanna enter in all four of these staves, the same exact pitches, if I hold down shift and I highlight them so that now that my carrot goes across all four of these systems, I can start typing a musical line and it'll input them into all four staves simultaneously. And you'll see that because I was using a unison, all of them get the same unison, but then I can easily just switch over to a um, chord and it will go top to bottom with the first four notes. Now I put five notes in, which means it put the extra note on the bottom stave. So you just have to remember if you're entering into four staves, you don't wanna push more than four notes at a time. Now this saves us a ton of time again, because if I was doing something very simple like a brass chorale, I could go ahead and put on quarter notes, and then I could play each chord one at a time, but it'll input them into Dorico for me. So let's say I want to start with an F major triad, so I have an F, A, C, and an F, and you can see it input all the notes. And then let's say we're gonna go now to a B flat, so I'll shift my pitches over. And then again, it knows top to bottom where to put them. And let's go to a G minor for fun, so we'll go here and then maybe we'll resolve back out to another F, and there you go. 
So this is a really fast way of entering ensemble parts, especially when you know what the voicing is going to be, because now I'm not gonna accidentally mouse click the wrong note in the wrong part, and it's much harder to get the ranges wrong, because seeing it there on the keyboard and hearing the playback from the computer, I know that what I'm getting is exactly what I put in, and so I get that tactile feedback, and it really helps avoid a lot of confusion, as well as a lot of typos as I'm entering the notes. Now there's a caveat here. Some of you might like to input your notes in transposed scores, which is fine, but that's really difficult to do in Dorico because when you enter in the notes on the MIDI keyboard, if you have an alto sax and a tenor sax, it doesn't know which one to transpose to. So my suggestion to you is to flip it over to concert pitch because then everything inputs the same and then the computer will just transpose it for you when you click the button back over again. Now another powerful tool here when we're inputting notes using the MIDI keyboard is the same way that we could enter in notes, we can actually change notes without affecting the rhythm. So I can hit the L key on the keyboard with these staves highlighted, and what this'll do is it'll allow me to change the, the notes, but not the rhythms, and again, I can do it in all four staves at once. So let's change our progression. Let's say maybe I wanted to do a B flat triad to an F triad, back to B flat, and then maybe to E flat. And so now, I got all the notes in, they're all in the correct ranges, and I could hear the playback so I knew that nothing was wrong, and it made it so much quicker. I'll do this a lot where I'll copy one part and I'll put it in another stave, and then I can use that command to just change the notes, um, but I get to keep that rhythm, which is so handy. Let me show you a version of that. So let's say I wanted to take this trumpet part here, and I wanted to copy it over into this bar 21. And then let's say I wanted to harmonize it in all the parts below. So if I was to just simply copy it down, which a shortcut for that is Control V on the Mac, you can see it copies it to the stave below. Now that all the parts have the same note values, I can go ahead, enter into my note entry tool, hold down Shift, go all the way down, and then I'm gonna hit the L key, which will allow me to change the note values. And now I can enter in all those notes and it will automatically change everything. And so that way I didn't have to like copy and paste or do anything weird. I just put in the rhythms and now I can change up the notes to make a unison line into a harmony line. Other great features of the MIDI keyboard is overwriting. Let's say you put in a line and you just realize, you know, that was totally wrong, et cetera, et cetera. We don't have to go in and delete everything before we re-enter notes. Dorico is actually smart enough to just basically overwrite things. So if I was to get out of the write tool and go back in here on this trumpet part, and let's say I needed to put in quarter notes. So if I go ahead and hit six, which is quarter note, and then I'm going to put on an accent on the note, which is the left bracket key. Now, when I enter in the notes, what it'll allow me to do is just enter in the note and it'll overwrite whatever was there. So I wanna put the same thing as the first trombone part, so it's two Gs. And then I need to have a couple of eighth notes. I'm gonna put on a tenuto and remove the accent. So I can hit F, and then now I can put the accent back on and go back up to the G. So it's really fast to just go in and wipe things out because I can just overwrite things with the MIDI keyboard. Now you heard me mention the fact that you can play things in using the MIDI keyboard as well. So let's say I wanted to go back here to the beginning of the chart and I wanted to put the first trombone part into um, this horn part. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to just play it in as if it's a recording. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna highlight this bar and then I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna hit this little red circle button, which is the record button. And what this'll do is it'll start the metronome clicking and then it'll allow me to enter the notes um, right as if I'm playing it on a musical instrument, which in this case will be my MIDI controller. Now, to be clear, when I do this, it's gonna give me one bar for free, meaning it's gonna, in 4-4, four, four, it's gonna give me four clicks, and then I'll hear all the other instruments playing back, and that way, when I'm entering it, I'll actually have that feedback. So let's give it a try.
Now, when I hit the space bar, you can see that it recorded all of my terrible MIDI performance, even my wrong note here. And obviously, I'm just going to highlight that, hit delete, and away it goes. Now, you might think, well, that looks terrible. There's all these extra syncopations and everything. And that's because in Dorico, there's a thing called the quantization setting. And all that means is, what's the smallest note value you're entering? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go under the system settings for Dorico, which is under the Dorico menu and preferences. I'm going to go under the play tab and I'm gonna scroll down and eventually you'll see this quantization section. And right now it's set to being the smallest note value being an eight, uh, a 16th note, but I'm actually gonna flip it over to an eighth note and then I'm going to uncheck detect grace notes because I don't want it to think that I'm putting in a grace note by accident. And I'm going to leave off the detect tuplets because I'm not playing any kind of triplet rhythm here. So I don't want it to get confused and think just because I'm a bad piano player that I might be playing a triplet. So I'm going to hit apply. And now I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to replay in that section. Now you'll notice because I was playing the notes kind of short, it actually entered them as eighth notes. So this time I'm going to play them much longer so that they actually come out as quarter notes. So again, I'm going to highlight the first part of the bar, and then I'm going to hit the record button, and we'll try it again. And see, there you go. Pretty darn good, and it came out pretty well. I have one eighth note here that should be a quarter note, so I can just fix that really quickly. But everything else came out pretty darn well, so it's a really handy tool. The other place that this is amazing is in, say, a drum set part or percussion parts. Now, in Dorico, there are two ways of entering in the drum set notation. You can use general MIDI note values, or you can use the visible note spectrum. By default, Dorico uses the visible one, which all that means is if you imagined that the percussion stave was a treble clef, it would correspond to the keys as if it was in treble clef. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a drum set part to this piece really quickly. Okay, now that I have my drum set part entered, I'm gonna go under Dorico and I'm gonna go to my preferences. And then I'm going to go under my note input. And again, if we scroll down in this section, eventually you're going to come to this percussion input. And right now it says input onto kit using the grid um, as using the percussion map, or I can use the staff position. And in this case, I'm going to flip it back to staff position, and I'm going to interpret it as a G clef, aka the treble clef. And that way it knows um, where I am going to be entering the notes on the keyboard, and it's a really handy tool. This was actually one of the things I love the most, because if you don't have drum pads, for example, it can be a little hard to remember where all the notes are on the uh, general MIDI scheme on the keyboard, because in some cases it just doesn't make any sense. So now that we have a drum set part added, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm actually going to start inputting these notes using the MIDI keyboard. So what I'm going to do is, because I'm a terrible pianist and I can only handle a couple things at once, I'm going to enter in a rock beat, but I'm going to do the snare drum part and the hi-hat part at the same time. Now the hi-hat is going to be two G's above middle C. And you can see when I hit that key, it, it enters the note. But I can do both of them at once. So if I want to have a snare drum on two and four, I can go ahead and I can just kind of play that beat. So I'd have one and two and three and four and. And you can see Dorico actually input both the snare drum, which is represented by the key C above middle C, as well as the hi-hat part. Now, when I wanna come back and put in my kick drum, I can do the exact same procedure, just go to the beginning of the measure, and this time I'm gonna flip it over to quarter notes because I wanna put a quarter note on every beat, and I also wanna put a hi-hat on two and four. So now I'm gonna hit the F key, which is kick drum, and then on this beat two, I'm gonna put in an F and a D because those are gonna be kick drum and the hi-hat with my foot. 
Now, Dorico by default makes the snare drum go down in drum set notation, which kind of drives me crazy because to me, your hands are the up stem and your feet are the down stem. So I'm going to go ahead and flip that over really quickly. So I go back to setup. And then if I go down to my drum set and I hit the three little dots here, I can edit my percussion kit. And then I can go to my snare drum and I can hit stem up, apply. And now you'll see the kick drum and the hi-hat pedal are linked together, and then the hi-hat and the snare drum are linked together, which is kind of the way I'd like it to be notated. And that was really easy to input it that way. Now, if you really want to make use of things like drum pads, or if you're kind of a stickler for MIDI input, you can go ahead and you can flip Dorico back over in that note input screen, and you can go down to the use percussion map, hit apply, and now you'll see that I can use the drum pads built into this IK Multimedia. So like I said before, the number one, the farthest to the left, is kick drum, and then it's snare, and then it doesn't utilize number three very well. It just puts in this kind of other kick drum, but number four happens to be my hi-hat, and so now I could put in that same kind of rock beat using this system. So on beat one, I want to have a kick drum, and then I want to have the um, hi-hat, and then another hi-hat, and then I will have kick drum, snare drum, and hi-hat. And you can see now I have kind of quick access to those notes without having to remember. But do understand, using the drum pads, because they're set up differently, you are going to have to utilize that percussion map rather than utilizing the, the as it appears, and that's how you would do it if you didn't have the drum pads. So hopefully you enjoyed this kind of quick overview of MIDI input. There's a lot of stuff that Dorico can do with MIDI input, but 99% of the time, the only thing I do is I enter notes and chords into single or multiple staves, I overwrite notes or I change notes without changing rhythms, and then I use it to get percussion input so much quicker and faster. So if you have any questions, please put them down in the comments. If you're enjoying the videos, like and subscribe. And if you want some more information on this IK Multimedia iRig 49, I know I'm giving you the full name there, it's actually a really cool device. I think it's going to be a great addition to my small setup at my office. And it really does the job for as inexpensive it is. is I think it really works well. Also, too, you can check out my new affiliate links. I have one down there for Sheet Music Plus. And so if you're going out to purchase some sheet music, whether I composed it or not, um, go ahead and click on that link. It's a great way to support the channel because you were just going to get that sheet music anyway. Even if you're just downloading something um, for 99 cents, every little bit helps. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you next time.